And if you look at the trends over the last 30 years, I think it's very clear that our politics has been shifting in a direction that is much, much more oriented around the concerns and the interests of the wealthiest Americans. There are two aspects of that story that Jacob and I try to tell in our book. One is what we call the organizational revolution, which really means the way in which the wealthiest and corporations have become much more organized and influential in American politics at the same time that the most important countervailing power in American politics, that is labor unions, has been an organizational decline. Right? There's been a tremendous shift in the balance of organizational resources and it's had a profound effect on our politics. The second aspect has been the radicalization of the Republican Party. Right, the, the continuous, and you know, every time I think they can't go further to the right, they go further to the right. right? Uh, President Obama said the other days, and I think this was actually quite accurate, Ronald Reagan could not win a Republican primary today, right? adopting the kinds of policies that he, that he uh, pursued in the 1980s. Right? Uh, the, the party has been radicalized. Uh, here's a slide. People, people often talk about polarization. Uh, between the political parties as if it's somehow about the Democrats moving to the left and Republicans moving equally to the right. But systematic e examination by political scientists of roll call votes shows that overwhelmingly the growth of polarization is a reflective that each cohort of Republicans coming into Congress is well to the right uh, of, the, of the cohorts uh, that they're replacing. Uh, now, to say that the shift to the right of the Republican Party uh, is, um, is a really, really important part of the story is not to let the Democratic Party off the hook. You know, we argue in our book that uh, on these issues, Republicans wear black hats, Democrats wear gray hats. They're conflicted, they're cross-pressured because of the, the, uh, the shifts in organizational power that have taken place in American society. Uh, but there is a huge and growing difference between the two parties on these issues. A simple way to see that, a, a concise way to show that is if you take the difference between the policies that the Obama administration would like to continue on health care over the next five to 10 years and contrast them with the proposals of the Ryan, of the Ryan plan that was just uh, the budget that was passed uh, by House Republicans, the difference the difference in the health care outcomes of those policies is something like 40 or 50 million Americans with or without health insurance, depending on which path you take. Right? And that number would continue to grow over time. Right? I mean, just think about that for a minute. You know, the next time somebody tells you there's no difference between the political parties, right? 40 or 50 million people either will have health insurance or won't have health insurance, depending on which path we follow.